location, location, location. That's a common real estate phrase, and it certainly applies to the subject of today's map. Hi everyone, I'm Dan Hansen, your host, and this is another episode of Fun With Maps. And today we're looking at a small country with great location, and you may not know a lot about it, but you've probably heard a couple of things connected with it, such as the Maltese Falcon and the Maltese Cross. Now, the Maltese Falcon, as you'll see, is the Humphrey Bogart film from 1941, and we'll see more about the Maltese Cross, too. So, of course, we're speaking about the southern European islands of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea, and it's, it's not really an island, it's an archipelago. And remember, archipelago is just a, a string of islands somewhere in a body of water. So let's take a little look at the map of the, the Mediterranean in Europe here and for the island of Malta. Okay, here's our map of the Mediterranean, the south of Europe here, and you'll recognize Spain and France and Italy and Greece and Croatia and Albania and all that. Okay, and then we have some of the big islands here in the, Mars, in the uh, Mediterranean. We've got Crete over here by between Greece and Turkey. We've got uh, we'll skip. The, we've got Sardinia and Corsica. We've got the Balearic Islands, which you'll see. You may reckon not know Balearic Islands, but you're going to know one or two that are in there. And of course, there's uh, down here Morocco and Algeria and Tunisia and Egypt over here and all that. But today we're looking at here's the island of Sicily, just off the coast of uh, Italy. You can see how small that is. How narrow this strait there is between Sicily and Italy. Okay, so if we go about 50 miles south of, of Sicily, we're going to come to the archipelago, the island, the Republic of Malta. And here's Malta here. It's, you'll see it's three big islands, but uh, they're the only inhabited ones. But that's Malta. So Malta, say about 50 miles south of uh, Sicily, it's about 176 miles east of Tunisia here. Okay, and it's about 207 miles north of uh, Libya there. So Malta, it's small, right? Uh, it's got a population of about 515,000, and the area is only about 122 square miles. So that makes it the world's 10th smallest country um, in area and fourth most densely populated sovereign country, okay? And the uh, capital, as we'll see, is Valletta. We'll see that. Valletta is the smallest national capital in the European Union. Its area is only 0 0.24 square miles. So, you know, a quarter of a mile uh, for Valletta. In contrast, uh, where I'm from, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, that's about 82 and a half square miles. So, 82 and a half square miles here and a quarter of a square mile, a square mile for the capital of uh, Malta, Valletta. So that's wild. So this is a really interesting map we're going to look at today. Some would call it the stuff that dreams are made of. And of course that's a reference. Humphrey Bogart's character, Sam Spade, um, speaks about the Maltese Falcon in the 1941 film. So we're going to start this episode by looking at maybe the first ever map of the world. And then we're going to have some fun with the map of Malta. So this, as promised, this might be the first map of the world, or what they knew of the world, according to someone named Annex Emander. And it's from the 6th century B.C. So here you've got Europe. Here you've got Asia. Here's what they call Libya, which is Africa. Here's the Nile River, the Black Sea, the Phasis River, all surrounded by ocean here. And then here's the Mediterranean, and you know some of it's uh, fairly accurate. You know the, the Gibraltar's a little wider than it really is, but here's the boot of Italy, and you know the Nile River, and and some of this Mediterranean looks kind of like, and then the Black Sea there. It's a uh, it's not bad for sixth century B.C. Now this is a obviously a more modern map of the Mediterranean. It's a good map by someone named O.H. Two Three Seven who uh, let us use it by the Creative Commons license. Um, so here's the Mediterranean. Here you've got the Iberian Peninsula, Portugal, Spain. There's France, Slovenia, Croatia, the boot of Italy. Always remember that. Albania, Greece, Turkey, the Middle East. Here's Syria, Lebanon, Israel. Here's Egypt, the Red Sea, Libya. 
you know, in an earlier episode of Fun with the Maps, we did Northern Africa, so we know Egypt, we know Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. You can see here the Strait of Gibraltar, how narrow that is right there, okay? Really narrow. And here's a Fun with Maps fact. So the uh, largest city on the Mediterranean, and there's a lot, is actually Alexandria, Egypt, on here, okay? So that's the largest city. The uh, second largest metropolitan area on the, the Mediterranean Sea is uh, Barcelona, which is up here in Spain. Okay, so you can see along with the Mediterranean, the Black Sea, all this, uh, the large, some of the large islands in the Mediterranean Sea. Here's Cyprus. Here's Crete, up in Greece. Okay, here's Sardinia and Corsica. Over here are the Balearic Islands off the Balearic Sea, and you're not, you may not know offhand the Balearic Islands, but uh, the four largest islands, you should probably, you've probably heard of a couple of them. This is Majorca, uh, there's Menorca, there's Ibiza, which you always hear about, you know, the beautiful people going there to Ibiza, the sun on the beach, and uh, Formentera. So those are the Balearic Islands there. Then, of course, at the end of the boot of Italy here is Sicily, okay? And look how narrow that is there, the Strait of Messina, how close Sicily is to Italy, extremely close. And then, if you go down uh, just a little from Sicily here, you'll see the small island of Malta, I should say archipelago of Malta, which we'll uh, take a better look at. So here's Malta down here to the south of Sicily. Here's a nice uh, NASA photo of that area. So here you've got Italy. Here you've got that narrow, narrow strait separating Sicily from Italy. So here you actually get the two biggest islands in, uh, in the Mediterranean. Here you've got Sicily and Sardinia. Okay, and of course here's Tunisia in Africa. So Sardinia, Sicily, Italy, Tunisia and then right here that's Malta okay and that's what we're gonna look at so here's kind of a topographic uh, map of Malta and you can see it's an archipelago which you know it's just some uh, group of islands and um, it's about 50 miles from southern Italy across the Malta Channel and only the three largest islands are inhabited okay so here you got the island of Malta here you've got Gozo, the second biggest, and here you've got Camino, um, the third biggest. So those are the only ones that are inhabited. Um, they formed, you know, back in the Ice Age, there was a, a, a land bridge actually between Sicily and North Africa, and as the sea levels rose after the last Ice Age, got swallowed up, but uh, uh, Malta, these islands are, are what's left of that. And in fact, for centuries, Malta was considered to be an island of North Africa. So it was a North African island. So here's another uh, map. This is another NASA map. And it shows the three main islands of Malta. Okay. And it's small in size, only about 122 square miles. But it is an independent republic now of Malta. And what's important about it, with the map, it's strategic because it's located about the midway in the Mediterranean between the uh, Straits of Gibraltar to the west and the Suez Canal in the east. Okay, so you got Malta here, Gozo here, Camino here, and basically this whole thing, though, this whole archipelago is called Malta. Okay, and you can see a little here there's numerous bays and inlets and all this is fantastic for ports and uh, using the harbors there you know so we'll see besides the great location to have all these natural indentations and all make it really uh, an attractive place for people to do trade and actually military operations and all you know they basically the landscape it's some low hills and uh, you know no big mountains or anything some terraced fields um, if it rains a lot, you'll get some temporary rivers, but there are no permanent rivers or lakes on Malta.
So as I said, the, as I said, the capital of Malta is Valletta. Um, it's the main urban area. So here you've got this harbor on the uh, east, natural harbors on the east. This middle peninsula here, this central one here, that's a Valletta, okay? This was taken from the uh, International Space Station in 2010, okay? Valletta here still has a medieval feel to it. Uh, it's got flagstone streets. You can think you're back in the 16th century. So tourists love going there. It's got ancient architecture. It's got, uh, you know, pedestrian shopping, restaurants. There's an international community. Um, that's Valletta, the capital here in this, this peninsula right there. So you have, uh, the one side of the peninsula, you have what's called the Grand Harbor. And in this Grand Harbor, they have these ancient forts still there. And you can see these forts here um, that were built centuries ago, you know, back in the uh, 16th century. So obviously a great tourist destination here. You want to see these 16th century forts right in the uh, Grand Harbor here off of Valletta. And this is another map. This is a nice map of it. So you've, here you've got, this is the, uh, on the east coast of Malta there. Here's Valletta, this central peninsula here is Valletta. Here's the Grand Harbor. And you can see just natural inlets and bays, great for uh, sailing and landing and all that. These harbors here, just uh, between, as I said, between its location and the, um, the natural harbors, it's a, it was a great destination. So it's been inhabited since about 5900 BC. Um, they think that settlers came from the island of Sicily, and, and no wonder, you know, they're so close there. Um, you know, because of its location in the center there and these great ports, uh, a succession of powers have contested and ruled the island. So you had the, the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians, Romans, Greeks, Arabs, Normans, Aragonese, something called the Knights of St. John, which we'll talk about, the French, the British, among others. And what's cool is most of these um, foreign influences have left some of their culture behind and made Malta what it is today. So there's some um, pottery they found there that, that suggests that, uh, you know, Stone Age people settled there um, coming from Italy and Sicily about 5200 BC and there's a real cool feature let's take a look at uh, something mysterious here from the past this is an archaeological feature of the Maltese Islands it's attributed to uh, maybe those ancient builders from the Stone Age or whatever they've got equidistant uniform grooved um, tracks you know cart tracks or cart ruts that they have at several locations in the islands. So most of them, the most prominent, are in a place called Clapham Junction. And one guess is, you know, maybe it was wooden wheeled carts that were driving along the uh, soft eroding uh, limestone. But we don't know, and, and no one really knows at this point. Here's another picture of the ruts. Um, there's a number of geology mysteries associated with the Cartwright site, especially Clapham Junction. One of the things is there's a number of triangles made from the limestone lines and ridges. And triangles, as you know, are not common in nature. I mean, nature doesn't, it's not one of nature's natural shapes, especially when it comes to rocks. So people have been wondering how and what they, how they got there, what are they, how were they formed, all of that. This is another image of the ruts. Uh, this is from visitmalta.com website, and you can see just how deep they are. Um, and there's at least 30 pairs of these, distinct pairs of these ruts. And some, you know, they kind of, uh, there's one across the crest, it intersects all the others. So, people are wondering, you know, back in the Punic Wars, there was some, uh, activity that might have caused these but they're just not sure. Someone named Lysy, L-Y-S-Y, uh, put these pictures out, these next two images, really show show the ruts well. Look at the depth there. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty deep for a 
ruts and for it to last like that for centuries. Let's look at his other picture. This is also by the uh, Lysy, L-Y-S-Y. And look at the depth there in the limestone of those ridges and you just wonder, you know, if that's from carts or, or what is that from? So you can't really attribute it to any one civilization because so many civilizations have landed on Malta because of their uh, central location. They, you know, they've been evaded and conquered and freed so many times. This is a great map um, by a user named M654Z and it shows Europe in 555 AD and so you know here's the Finnic people, Norse, Swedes, Danes, Gets, Britain, Irish, the Slavs, the Balts, the Huns, Frankish, Visigoths, Numidians, you know down here in Africa, here it just says Arabs, all this. This purple area here that you see that's the Byzantine Empire and that's the Oh, probably the the Byzantine Empire at its peak and you can see that of course Malta here just off of Sicily that's part of it. Here's Carthage and Alexandria um, but Malta here is part of the Byzantine Empire there in 555 so you know Phoenician traders came later they colonized uh, around 1000 BC after the Phoenicians came the Carthaginians here's Carthage you know it's so close there um, <clears throat> you know, then you, if you history buffs, you know about the, the first and second Punic Wars. Um, so that you got the Carthaginians, you got the Romans, all that stuff. But here's an interesting part. So the Greeks settled around 700 BC. So here's Greece, and they came in settled around 700, and they can tell this by some of the architectural remains. Okay, that's how they date it. They called the island Melite, M-E-L-I-T-E. And here's a fun with maps fact. So if you know your New Testament, uh, in 58 AD, the Apostle Paul was traveling with the evangelist Luke, Luke who wrote the Gospel and also the Acts of the Apostles. And they were washed up on the island of Malta, okay? And they were shipwrecked there. And Paul was there for about three months preaching the Christian faith and in fact Luke wrote about it the island of Malta is actually mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles but they called it Melitene it's like you know the, the Greeks called it Melite this was Melitene before it was Malta so you know then it became part of the Western Roman Empire the Vandals came in the Ostrogoths um, but Malta was part of the Byzantine Empire until about 870 and that's when the Arabs uh, uh, took it over. This is a map from 1700 and you can see the three main islands here okay and you see it's up here it's called Melite like the Greeks named it instead of Malta uh, here's Melita here down here it does say Malta okay um, here's Valletta you can see sticking out there so back then the island was generally known for its, uh, it had a, an order of knights, a military religious order of knights called the Johanniters. Um, they were established there after the Crusades and they became great hospital helpers um, and they helped secure the whole Mediterranean Sea against the Turks, okay? And then the Muslim rule ended when the Normans conquered the island in 1091 and then they re-Christianized the whole islands of Malta um, by 1249 and this is where it's, it's kind of cool they were part of the Kingdom of Sicily but in 1530 Charles V of Spain gave the Maltese islands to the Order of Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem in perpetual lease so that's that's that Order of Knights we're talking about and they were given this islands these islands of Malta as a perpetual lease and then you know it became a British colony and uh, was, the British would host their Mediterranean fleet there and they became part of the British Empire um, after the Suez Canal opened in 1869 you know Malta is halfway between the Suez Canal and the Straits of Gibraltar so a very very important position um, 
you know, so for the British, for example, they'd come down the coast, they'd go through the Straits of Gibraltar into the Mediterranean, stop off at Malta, go through the Suez Canal, and over to India. That was their route, okay? And of course, you know, with its central location, its ports and all, it was, uh, it was besieged by the Axis powers during World War II, um, <coughs> especially with Italy so close to it. And the Allies used it as a base for their operations in both the Mediterranean and the, uh, the uh, North Africa. So this is a picture of the, from the Siege of Malta when they were attacked um, in 1942. And this street, you know, heavily bombed by the Germans and Italians, was the main street in, in Valletta, the capital. It was called uh, Kingsway back then. It's now Republic Street. But you can see just how devastated it was, how the bombing was there. Here's a fun with maps fact. You know, during the First World War, between 1915 and 1918, Malta was known as the nurse of the Mediterranean because they brought so many wounded soldiers were brought there because of their great location. Um, Second World War, you know, bombings like this were a problem, so Churchill, um, Churchill wanted to keep their fleet there, the British, the Royal Navy's fleet there, but they moved it to Alexandria, Egypt instead because it was just too susceptible to air attacks and all. It was just, you know, it's a great location, but also a dangerous location. So in World War II, not only was Malta used uh, by the British to launch attacks on the Italian Navy and used as a submarine base, but because it was so close, it was used as a listening post, and it intercepted German radio message, messages, including traffic from Enigma. Heard of Enigma? Here's a fun with maps fact. The Enigma machine was a cipher device, okay, a code type device. The Nazis used it extensively during World War II, and it was considered so secure, no one could crack it, so they would send the most top secret messages using Enigma. But a Polish mathematician named Marian Rajewski was able to crack the Enigma codes, and that really went a long way to helping the Allies uh, defeat the Axis in World War II. So here's a picture of the, the flag of Malta, and you know it's got the red and the white, and then it's got something up here. Okay, so we saw the, the terrible bombing in the Siege of Malta and uh, the bravery of the Maltese people during the Second Siege of Malta moved the King, King George VI, to award the George Cross to Malta on a collective basis in 1942 to, quote, bear witness to a heroism and devotion that will long be famous in history. So this depiction of the George Cross is now a part of the official flag of Malta and on its uh, country's arms so you know instead of the George Cross going to an individual this time he gave it to a whole a whole nation for their bravery so then the British Parliament you know they they finally in 64 passed the Malta Independence Act and so Malta was independent, but they still had Elizabeth as a queen, and you know it's kind of like with, with India. And then in 1974, it's Republic Day. Uh, it's you know they were a Commonwealth with the president of the head of state. And in 1979, the last British troops in the Royal Navy uh, withdrew from Malta, and that's called Freedom Day in Malta. And uh, Malta declared itself a neutral and non-aligned state. Okay, then they joined the European Union in 2004 and the Eurozone in 2008. So here's a, a fun with maps fact. So Malta adopted this policy of neutrality right in 1980. In 1989, because of their low central location and their neutrality, it was chosen as the site of a summit between U.S. President George H. W. Bush and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. This was their first face-to-face -face encounter and it signaled the end of the Cold War and this happened in Malta because of its neutrality and for its central location. So this is a, a CIA map of, of Malta here and you can see the three big islands, uh, the only uninhabited islands and there's Valletta again of course and all that. 
you could see all these coves and harbors and all and that's to me there's a lot of uh, discussion about um, where the name Malta might have come from okay uh, the one I like is the Phoenician word Malith which means haven or port which could refer to all these you know bays and coves and all they're just natural here in Malta so to me that makes a lot of sense so let me digress a second here from the map and talk about the Maltese Falcon in 1530 Charles V the Holy Roman Emperor remember he gave the islands to the Knights Hospitaller in a perpetual lease but there was a catch they had to pay for this lease every year <laughs> they had to pay an annual tribute of one single Maltese Falcon okay so these knights, the military religious order, they also been called the Order of St. John, the Knights of Malta. Um, they had been driven out by the Ottomans in the 1500s. But, um, so the lease, they got the islands, but they had to come up with a, a Maltese falcon once a year to give to. For many of us, when we hear Maltese falcon, we think about the 1941 American film the Maltese Falcon. It was based on the 1930 novel of the same name by Dashiell Hammett. This was the uh, first um, movie directed by the legendary John Huston. Um, it's got Humphrey Bogart as uh, private investigator Sam Spade and this is Mary Astor, his femme fatale, Peter Lorre, Sidney Greenstreet, you know some of these big names. Um, Basically, the story is there's a San Francisco private detective. Here's Humphrey Bogart as Sam Spade. And there's three unscru unscrupulous adventurers. They're all trying to get this jewel encrusted falcon statuette called the Maltese Falcon. Okay? So the film's opening credits say, quote, in 1539, the Knight Templars of Malta paid tribute to Charles V of Spain by sending him a golden falcon encrusted from beak to claw with rarest jewels. But pirates seized the galley carrying this priceless token, and the date and the fate of the Maltese falcon remains a mystery to this day. So that's how they start the movie. It's pretty cool. It, uh, it was nominated for three Academy Awards and is thought to be one of the greatest films of all time. Fun with maps fact, the actual statuette turned out to be pretty valuable in real life too. Um, they made several props for the for the movie and you can see most of them were lightweight because the way Sam Spade, Humphrey Bogart as Sam Spade carries them, you know, if they were 45 pounds you could never carry them like that. So they did make a couple of 45 pound versions and identified them as being in the movie and in 2013 it sold for four million dollars to an anonymous buyer so that's a lot for the movie memorabilia memorabilia so if you saw the movie you know at the end there uh, uh, there's a policeman asking yes Sam Spade you know what's what's this all about what is this thing he, and the policeman says heavy he says what is it so Humphrey Bogart as Sam Spade replies the uh, stuff that dreams are made of and what's cool about that line, it's one of the most, you know, mimicked uh, lines in film history. It stands out because it wasn't in the book. Humphrey Bogart kind of ad-libbed that. It's based on something in The Tempest by Shakespeare, but he just came up with that. He suggested the line, and it's become this classic line, the uh, stuff that dreams are made of. So this is a great map of the languages of Europe, and you can see, okay, Iceland, English, Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, Estonian, Latvian, Lithuanian, all the ones you'd expect, French here, Catalan, Italian, Turkish, Kurdish, all this, Armenian. You'll see down here it shows that Malta, it's Maltese, and Malte, Maltese descended from Sicilian Arabic. Um, Maltese is the official language, English is the second official language. Um, most people are at least conversational in the Italian language too because they're so close and that's just where their history is. So here's a fun with maps fact. This is a painting called St. Jerome Writing by the great Caravaggio in 1607, okay? So Caravaggio spent about uh, a year and a half in Malta and 15 months 
and a couple of his works, this uh, St. Jerome writing and also the beheading of St. John the Baptist are actually on display in, uh, in, uh, in Malta. But a little closer to home for me, this is a, a, another Caravaggio painting that he painted in Malta. And this is the, the crucifixion of St. Andrew did in 1606 or 7 by Caravaggio. And this painting is in the Cleveland Museum of Art about five minutes from my house. And it's uh, always been one of my favorite uh, uh, favorite paintings. It's huge. When you go in the room, it just, you know, it'll take your breath away. It's, a, it's really something to see. But just like the Maltese Falcon, you've probably heard of the Maltese Cross. And there's a picture. It's this cross symbol with the, the arrowhead shape, quadrilaterals and all that. Um, it's based on an earlier eight-pointed cross. It's chiefly associated with the Knights Hospitaller, the Order of St. John, you know, which we just talked about with the Maltese Falcon and the island of Malta, but other cultures and organizations have claimed the Maltese Cross as well. What's most interesting for me about the map of Malta, um, it's the location midway between the Straits of Gibraltar and the Suez Canal and the Mediterranean Sea. So many conquerors, friends and foes, have capitalized on that location, and in doing so, they left behind some of their culture, and that's what makes Malta what it is, that combination of all these historical figures there and all. So I hope if you ever watch the movie The Maltese Falcon, again, for the first time, you'll have a, a, a little background on that famous bird. After all, it is the stuff that dreams are made of, and be glad I didn't attempt a Humphrey Bogart impersonation. You wouldn't want to hear that. So uh, if you like this episode, I hope you click like. Uh, consider subscribing in the lower right there um, so you never miss an episode. We have some good ones coming up. And if you leave a comment, I will answer. I'm really interested in your comments, how we can improve other countries you might want to, other maps you might want to consider, and whatever comments, I'd be eager to hear them. So until then, I'm your host, Dan Hansen, and keep on having fun with maps.